let g be an abelian group, we assume that the order of g is p squared, where p is a prime number. We want to prove that g is isomorphic to either the cyclic group of order p squared or the product of two cyclic groups of order p. Now, the point of this exercise is to use group isomorphisms. Often, we're going to have shortcuts. So, if we had two finite cyclic groups, we could tell whether they're isomorphic or not just by counting up the number of elements in each group. In general, we're supposed to actually construct the isomorphism. So if somebody hands you two groups and says that they're clearly isomorphic, then to do that, you actually produce the map. Let's also recall, what are we doing with an isomorphism? So the idea here is, we're just relabeling the points of one group to be the points of the other group, and we want it so that the multiplication carries over. So the idea is, our two groups are the same, except for the way they're described. Before we prove our result, Let's take a look at an example. So we'll let p be equal to 2, and the order of our group is 4. This group is supposed to be isomorphic to either cyclic group of order 4 or a product of two groups cyclic of order 2. Here we'll represent these by z mod 4 under modular addition. This is just the label 0, 1, 2, and 3. We add and subtract as normal, but we add or subtract multiples of 4 to make sure we get back in the set 0, 1, 2, and 3. Then, our identity element 0 of order 1, 1 and 3 are going to be elements of order 4, 2 is going to be an element of order 2. For z2 cross z2, again we use addition, so these are going to be ordered pairs, the elements are going to be 0 or 1, okay, in this case 1 plus 1 is 0, so the identity element's going to be 0, 0, and then every other element is going to have order 2. So you'll note the difference here. This group has elements of order 4. This group has no elements of order 4. Let's do our proof. Now, to start off, our group is order p squared. So orders of elements in the group have to divide the order of the group. So the possibilities are 1, p, or p squared. If it turns out there's an element of order p squared, then we're looking at cyclic group of order p squared, and we're done. So we'll suppose there's no element with order p squared. It's going to mean all elements have either order 1 or order p. The only way we can get order 1 is if we're looking at the identity element. Now, to start, I just pick any element that's not the identity element. So I'll call that x. x has order p, so it's going to generate a subgroup of order p. So we'll call that h1. So we just take x, run through all the powers. x to the p is going to be the identity. Now, since our group is order p squared, that leaves a lot of other elements. So I take any one of those. It's not my subgroup h1. Call that y. We take subgroup generated by y. So that's going to have p elements. So we'll have y, y squared, up through y to p. Since y is order p, that gives us the identity again. So I have my two subgroups, h1 and h2, each cyclic of order p. With the subgroups h1 and h2, we can define our isomorphism i. So i is going to carry the product of h1 with h2 into our group g. We send the pair AB to the product in G. Now, to show that we have an isomorphism, first I want to show that I is a homomorphism. So that means I respects group multiplication. So if I take a product, apply I, I get the same answer as if I took each element, applied I, and then took the product. So it doesn't matter if I take the product before or after I apply i. Then, we're going to show that i is 1 to 1 onto. That'll just mean we're taking the elements on the left-hand side, relabeling as elements on the right-hand side. Now note, in this case, 
There are two different objects here. On the left-hand side, these are going to be ordered pairs of elements in G. On the right-hand side, we have actual elements of G. To see the homomorphism property, I start with two ordered pairs, A1B1 and A2B2. We apply I and then we multiply. Now, if I apply I to a pair, we just multiply the entries. So I want it with A1B1 times A2B2. We rearrange the terms. I get A1, A2 times B1, B2. Now I can either unwind or start with the answer, work my way back. So we'll start with the answer. So I'm going to take I and apply it to the product of our pairs. Now if we take the product of those pairs, we're going to get A1, A2, comma, B1, B2. If I apply I to that, we just get our term in the middle. So that shows my homomorphism property. What's left? I need to show 1 to 1 and on to. Since we have the homomorphism property to show 1 to 1, I just need to show that the kernel of i is equal to e comma e, where e is the identity in G. So what we're trying to show here, the only way I can wind up landing on the identity element in G is if we start with e comma e on this side. So I'm going to suppose we have a comma b going to e. That means a times b is equal to e, which also means that a inverse is equal to b. Now, since h1 is closed under inverse and a is in h1, that means b is also in h1. So B is in the intersection of H1 and H2. Now, that has to be the identity, okay? If I have an element X of order P in H1 and H2, well, that element X is gonna generate subgroup of order P. So it's all of H1 and all of H2. So the intersection is H1 and H2. Okay, so they're equal. Now, that means B is the identity, so a is also going to be the identity, which means our pair is E comma E. So that means our map is one to one. Now, since I have a one to one map going from a set with P squared elements to a set with P squared elements, that means we're also on to. As a final note, I want to state our answer strictly in terms of integers mod P. We'll have another isomorphism I prime defined by taking your pairs of integers mod p, say m and n, using them as exponents for x and y, and then take the product. So here we're just taking a composition of isomorphisms. We'll have our i from before, and then we have another one, j, which takes pairs of integers modulo p, sends them to another pair, which will be x and y with our integers as the exponents, and then we compose.